friends welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and in this series of videos we are going to talk about glycogen metabolism now in this glycogen metabolism this is actually a part of the original series of carbohydrate metabolism uh, which we have been talking about since last uh, few lectures in this carbohydrate metabolism series we have four videos the first video will explain uh, the different balance between the carbohydrate that is the, the glycogen synthesis and glycogen breakdown so we are trying to find out the balance and how exactly the glycogen synthesis and breakdown is properly balanced in human body that's what we will see this is the first thing the second uh, part of the lecture series will deal with uh, each of the situation that is glycogen synthesis or glycogenesis in the third we'll talk about glycogen breakdown or glycogenolysis and we will also talk about another scenario that is linked with all these processes that is gluconeogenesis which is also uh, helpful to keep uh, the blood glucose level in balance in our body so let's start with this video and in this lecture i'm going to just talk about and give you an overview about the glycogen metabolism and especially to give you an idea about how exactly the balance between glycogen synthesis and glycogen breakdown is maintained in our body now the thing in this case of glycogen synthesis and breakdown to understand that you need to know a simple idea about glycogen that is what is glycogen and why we need glycogen in the first place the thing is glycogen is a polysaccharide polysaccharide means it is made up with multiple glucose residues joined together with glycosidic linkage or glycosidic bond now the scenario is glycogen is much complex it's a complex glucose structure and all those glucose they link with each other form branches with each other that's what glycogen really is now the thing is you know we and our lifestyle if you look at us what we happen normally we we eat food right when we get food get some food good food we eat it after the eating and we have the digestion and in our body all the materials of carbohydrate broken down products they are there in our body in our body cell now the thing is you know not always we need uh, to break all of them down to produce energy now let's say this whole idea if I divide into two different part I divide one part as a highly energetic highly energetic state another part as a low energy state these are the two state our body has normally low energy state is when we lack any food for long period of time if you go through fasting in that case what happens we are going through long energy state or we can say that is not a well fed state we lack the proper food that always happens like every single day uh, every single night time if you look eight hours ten hours of sleep if the duration that duration your body is almost using all the carbohydrate that was there breaking them down utilizing producing energy but we are not eating anything so at the very morning you need to eat a good healthy breakfast uh, to cope up with that scenario so normally low energy state means we have low or less less food or we also call it this is a starved starved state right or we can also call it as a uh, like well it's not a well-fed state okay while highly energetic state if you look that is a state when you have a proper amount of feed food so we call it a well fed state so in this case you have access to food that means your body has access to food the cells contain all the broken down products of carbohydrate in your body now in that case your body will be highly energetic do you know why because you have carbohydrate you will break them down generate energy but when you don't have carbohydrates in your cell then in that case it will fail to generate proper amount of energy and in that case you will feel low energetic now the thing is it's all about whatever scenario we are looking here it's all about carbohydrate and whenever we are talking about carbohydrate we are talking about the simplest form that is glucose and the complex form that is glycogen now the thing is when you are well fed when you are a well fed state you have plenty of glucose in your bloodstream and you don't need all of it at that point of time because you have already utilized many of the glucose molecules in this state and you have generated ample amount of energy that will help you to survive 
but still you have excess glucose in your bloodstream in your body so you don't need it right then but you know glucose is a very important energy molecule that will break and give you a lot of energy so it's not good idea to release it from your body with excretion on any of the excretory system we never do that body has a clever way of preserving glucose molecules inside so what they will do is that glucose as a simplest form but it will acquire more space if they want to acquire it inside every single cell as glucose molecule but if we combine glucose all together if you add glucose molecules together make branches and chains that is going to form glycogen so it will be highly branched and it will take less space so you can store more molecules of glucose as glycogen in specific type of tissue in our body that is liver so what we do we make glycogen from glucose so in the well-fed state where we are going here we are going from glucose to glycogen we are storing glycogen in the liver that is the scenario and that will also balance the concentration of glucose in the bloodstream because here we are talking about the glucose level in the bloodstream let me draw it in the middle as well let me draw it here the glucose concentration in the blood stream which is very very important you need to keep this thing in balance right so here we are converting glucose into glycogen we have ample excess glucose now the scenario 2 starved state in this case or uh, let's say in, in, in this case we have low energy because we don't have sufficient amount of glucose now the question is you know let's say at the very beginning we have a well-fed state we stored some glucose as glycogen in some time later in the same organism's body they are undergoing a starved uh, state or low fed state in this case they need energy otherwise vital functionalities may be halted so to make this process running we can utilize the stored glucose that was present in the liver as glycogen so what we are going here for the less fed, less fed state or we can say the starved uh, state we take glycogen break it down and produce glucose so we are going backwards in this case we are going here glycogen to glucose and then glucose is again released in the blood and the body will again take glucose from the blood and it will also produce enough amount of energy in the form of ATP that our body can utilize so you see this is a cycle that continues between the well-fed state and the starved state and all the situations we are either converting the glucose into glycogen or breaking down glycogen into glucose based on our requirement another important thing happens not only between glycogen to glucose but in this kind of starved state when there is no much glucose available it's very important to produce glucose from any source that we have now in this case we can also produce glucose by going backwards from pyruvate which is a part of glycolytic pathway we can go backwards or reverse of the glycolytic uh, pathway from pyruvate to produce glucose the process known as neoglucogenesis or gluconeogenesis so in either way we can produce uh, glucose and that glucose will be utilized and it can normalize the blood glucose concentration over there so you can also say that neoglucogenesis neoglucogenesis also plays an important role of providing glucose molecules uh, for for the use now now if we go in the center and controlling the blood glucose level which is really really vital and crucial part of our body's homeostasis response and in this case uh, this conversion and the signal uh, that tell our body that to break down glycogen or to synthesize glycogen depends on the release of different hormones okay especially two different hormones insulin and glucagon so these two hormones you always should remember the name insulin and glucagon the idea here if insulin is secreted and insulin signaling will ultimately dictate the blood sugar or blood glucose level to be re reduced in this case so insulin will tell all the all the other cells or the, or, or the cells of liver to store the glucose as glycogen 
take the glucose from bloodstream and convert it into the glycogen so it prefers glycogenesis insulin prefers the process of glycogenesis while secretion of glucagon in the opposite scenario the reverse scenario secretion of glucagon will tell that the body is starved for glucose there, no, there is not enough am amount of glucose present so it will signal glycogenolysis or breakdown of glycogen so that the glucose molecules can be released into the bloodstream so that is the idea when for uh, for patients with high blood glucose level they need to insert insulin from outside so that that concentration of blood glucose level can be normalized so this is a fundamental concept in lip carbohydrate digestion especially with the glycogen and glucose interplay in our body and how they are regulated this is the overview that we need to know and i have an animation to show you as well to talk about the same features but for the next few video series we are going to talk about each of the part we are going to talk about the glycogen breakdown or glycogenolysis we are going to talk about glycogen synthesis or glycogenesis we are going to talk about the neoglucogenesis and also we are going to talk about how exactly uh, the role of insulin and glucagon helps uh, to regulate the blood glucose level in our body so watch the second part of this animation video but stay tuned and complete this series because this series is going to give you some important informations thank you okay friends uh, now let's look at uh, the hormonal regulation of glycogen metabolism we saw two different states of glycogen metabolism one is a well-fed state another one is a starved state and we also know that there are two phenomena that are always linked with each other one is the synthesis of glycogen known as glycogenesis another one is the breakdown of glycogen into glucose or glycogenolysis both of these processes occur in two types of tissues in our body one is the liver cell another one is the muscle cells now let's look at the actual mechanism of all these processes in details glucagon is a polypeptide hormone which is produced by pancreas in response to low glucose level in the bloodstream it binds to this glucose receptor on the outside of the liver cells that we are looking at right now in response to this binding the receptor causes the release of cyclic amp inside the cell that is inside the cell cytosol the cyclic amp further activates the glycogen degradation process now once the glycogen degradation begins and at the end of the glycogen degradation we produce enough number of glucose molecules that can be released out of the cell into the bloodstream that we can take and use for generation of energy the other hormone is epinephrine which is an adrenal hormone is released into the bloodstream in response to stress now this epinephrine binds to the adrenergic receptors on the surface and there are two types of adrenergic receptors alpha adrenergic receptor and beta adrenergic receptors on the outer surface of the liver cells in response to this alpha receptor it causes an increase in calcium ion concentration inside the cell and in response to the binding with beta receptor it causes the increase in cyclic amp level inside the cell both of this so called the second messengers which are cyclic amp and calcium ions this second messenger stimulate the glycogen degradation and again similarly it will degrade glycogen break down glycogen into glucose monomers which can be taken out through the glucose transporters into the blood stream now in liver it is thought that glycogen synthesis is stimulated directly by glucose uptake now in this case glucose can inhibit the glycogen phosphorylase enzyme by binding to its t state okay t is a tense state if glucose binds with this glycogen phosphorylase enzyme to the t state it will not allow the glycogen phosphorylase uh, to break down glycogen into glucose and that's quite logical because if you have adequate amount of glucose you need to stop uh, the degradation of carb like glycogen into glucose anymore now if you look at the hormonal control of uh, metabolism in muscle cells in muscle cells epinephrine binds to beta adrenergic receptors and that leads to the increase intracellular levels of cyclic amp just we saw the scenario happened in liver cell this cyclic amp acts as a secondary messenger and uh, it activates the glycogen degradation 
and also it influences glycolysis pathway. So not only degrades glycogen to produce glucose molecules, but also involved to induce the process of uh, converting glucose into the energy molecules with the help of glycolysis. So it also elevates the level of ATP available in the muscle cells when it's required. When the level of circulating glucose is high in the bloodstream, in that case insulin hormone is released again from pancreas. It's a beta cell of pancreas. In this case insulin stimulates glycogen synthesis. Insulin directly binds with a receptor outside uh, of the muscle cells here which is insulin receptor and this stimulates the uptake of glucose which drives the glycogen synthesis inside the cell. So binding of insulin causes glucose to flow inside the cell and then glucose monomers will be linked together and cross-linked to make glycogen which is a complex polymer of glucose. So if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to make it grow and also make more and more videos like this for you and also share this video with every friend and also in every social networking sites thank you